Hi, welcome to Just Jesus. This is lesson 39 today. It's going to be a great lesson, of course, and we're going to really enjoy it. And this lesson today is Buried with Christ. Buried with Christ. But before we go on, let's pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray that in this lesson today, our eyes of our understanding being enlightened by the Holy Spirit will truly implant into our hearts the truth that we've been buried with Christ, that in fact, we've already had a burial. And that's where I pray in Jesus' name today, Father. Amen. Hallelujah. If you've got your notes, that's brilliant. But always remember whether you've got the notes or not, just remember to write no more than five bullet points down of what the Holy Spirit speaks to your heart. And of course, answer the questions at the end. It, it isn't about getting all the questions right or wrong. It's about meditating and churning over what you've listened to and kind of, you know, as you churn it over in answering the question, it implants it into your heart and mind even more. So be encouraged to do that. Uh, I ask and uh, be encouraged. Amen. And so let's start the lesson today, lesson 39, Buried with Christ. And if you remember through all of the Just Jesus teachings, we've been looking at in Christ, in whom, in him, uh, etc. And we've learned that it's in, by, with. And there's also this terminology that Paul the Apostle comes up with, positional truth, as in, in Christ, is with Christ. And with Christ, essentially, is the way in which you were in Christ. It's the way he brought about all the benefits of the cross and resurrection into your life. It's the way it was implemented into you. It's because that you of the fact that you was with Christ, you have received Christ and all of its benefits in Christ if that makes sense. And so it's the very mode, it's the very way that Christ has all bought all these finished uh, finished uh, in Christ works into your life. And so that's so important. So that's why in the last number, of in the last seven lessons or so of just Jesus, we are finishing with this truth of with Christ because this is the way it happens. This is what Jesus did in order for you to receive and this is what he did in you and with you and that's so key because you're not only in Christ you're with Christ and that's so important hallelujah and so let's begin with the introduction let's read this together when you became a Christian a whole new life started you were buried with Christ your old life is gone forever and we've talked about the new creation we over this series we've talked about the old life being gone and this is the way actually it was brought about because you was with christ in his burial you was with christ in his crucifixion we've already looked at that last lesson that you was crucified with christ and you was also buried with Christ. And this is so important. If you remember last time, I called it the Holy Spirit selfie or the Jesus selfie. You know, we're all used to mobile phones today and we take photos and selfies and, and, and put them online and, and we enjoy looking at ourselves sometimes. And, and if you really want to know how and what your identity is in Christ. This is what you must see. You must see yourself as crucified with Christ. You must see yourself as buried with Christ. You must see yourself as quickened with Christ. You must see yourself as raised with Christ. You must see yourself as seated with Christ. And you must see yourself as glorified with Christ. And you must see yourself as reigning with Christ. This is the journey as it were, the journey all the way through the crucifixion to being reigning with Christ for a thousand years. This is the journey, folks. 
This is your selfie. It's not you. It's not what you look at when you get into the look in the mirror. It's not the you that when you take a mobile phone picture of your selfie of yourself. It's not all your weaknesses and, and all the things you do wrong. Your real Holy Spirit selfie is now your the fact that you are with Christ Jesus. That is your overall self in that. Now, containing that is all the things I've been teaching you that being in Christ you have received. But if you want like an overview, it's the fact that you was with Christ through that whole process from crucifixion to reigning that's to come. And so we're going to learn all about this. And it's fantastic, folks, when you get the real selfie. And I really encourage you to get the real Holy Spirit selfie, not the ones you think in your mind, not the one the devil accuses you of, not the ones the religious try and give you. It's the one now that is found in Christ and with Christ. Amen. So let's go to the Bible reading. And the main scriptures today are Colossians 2 verse 12 and Romans 6 verse 3 and Romans 6 verse 4. So now let's just tackle and read together Colossians 2 12. It says this, Buried with him in baptism, wherein you are also risen with him through faith of the operation of God who has raised him from the dead. And so in this particular verse, we see two withs. Uh, we see with Christ in his, the baptism of his death, and we see with Christ raised from the dead. But today we're going to particularly focus on buried with Christ. And again, this is Paul's doctrine, the Apostle Paul. He's talked about the ins. Now he's given the overall picture that you was with Christ. You was in union with him when he was crucified. But you was in union with him when you were buried with him. And so this is in reference now to the old life, the old you. In fact, a Christian has had two burials, uh, or will have two burials. There's the natural burial when we physically die. But there's the spiritual burial when we was buried with Christ before we was even born. We was buried with him. He's already been buried. So we was associated with him supernaturally because, of course, Christ already knew everyone that would be saved. And so when you believed on Jesus Christ, that came into your time and space, that came into your being and was applied to you. But the reality is supernaturally, God has already done the work. And you was with Christ and identified with Christ in his burial. And that's so important. Because if we can get this truth that we was crucified with Christ and buried with Christ, we will see what God has truly done with the old man. Not only that, we will continue on the journey to see what he's done in his resurrection, in the fact that he's, we're raised with him, seated with him, and reign with him. If You see, sometimes we get stuck, don't we, at just the crucifixion, and we get stuck at just the burial. We, we don't get past to the resurrection, or the seating, or the reigning with Christ. Because all is true of the believer. This is your new selfie. And so it's just like your crucifixion with Christ took place, your burial has took place, but also, if you want to go down the line, your reigning with Christ will take place. It's fact. It is done. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so this is about getting a couple of aspects of Christ's work into your life. It's about all the aspects of Christ's work working in you at this moment. Praise the Lord. And so it says, buried with him in baptism. So baptism is representing, when we see water baptism in scripture, it represents the death, burial and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. When we go through water baptism, we are identifying symbolically with the revelation that has already took place in our spirit. 
Let me say that again. It's so, it's so important. When we get baptised in water, symbolically, it represents the death and burial of the Lord Jesus Christ and us with him. And then the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ and us with him. That's what water baptism means. That's Christian baptism. And so that's why in the early church, of course, the baptism, and easy even today, is so important. It's not that baptism saves, it's what it represents. That that symbolic act of discipleship represents the fact that we spiritually have been died, buried, and raised with Christ. But we must go beyond just the theological aspect. Because if you do a baptism class, for instance, you, you know, we talk about water baptism and say, people say, hey man, I, I, I go down in the waters, that represents I died and was buried with Christ and I come up out of the waters, that means I'm resurrected with Christ. And it, it just remains at that surface level. But the reality is it's already happened to you spiritually. So number one, don't try and die. We're not supposed as, as Christians learn how to die and, and continue to die and be crucified over and over again. That's happened. So we identify ourselves, not in our own personal way of trying to get crucified and die to self. We identify with the death of Christ. That means I am now dead to sin, you see. I identify with myself with what has actually took place literally in reality, by the power of the Holy Spirit. In the same way, I identify myself literally and in reality by the new life I'm given now with the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this goes beyond just theology. The theology teaches us the reality that's actually happened in us. Now in Colossians 2 verse 12, we see here, buried with him in the baptism. So that baptism aspect represents the burial with Christ aspect. The baptism in water is a representation of a burial. And so you have been buried with Christ. You've already, as a Christian, your old life has already had a funeral. I'll say that again, it's so important because you've got to get this into your spirit. Your old sinful nature, your old life that you can have a memory of, that sometimes can trouble you, is buried with Christ. It was crucified with Christ to death. And now it's been proven that it's dead because it was buried. You know, God did not allow Jesus to be buried alive. Can I just say that? The reason the Romans used to pierce the side of their victims like they pierced the side of Jesus was to make sure they was actually dead. And when blood and water flowed, it would prove that they was dead. And so in the same way, we must understand, they proved that Jesus was dead. And then because he was dead, he was then buried. So burial, being buried with Christ, means Jesus was buried because he had died. Now, you were buried with Christ, so you died. When I say you, I mean the old you, your old life, died and was buried with Christ. It was be put your old life in Christ and with Christ was in the tomb. So you've already been buried. So why are you trying to bury that which Christ has already buried? Why are you trying to put to death that which Christ has already put to death with him? That's so important, folks. Again, I'll read out here what it means if we turn to the word study, buried with. Buried with means this, to bury together with. The former sinfulness, utterly taken away. Shall I read that again? 
because I really want you to get this revelation to bury together with former sinfulness utterly taken away. So the rotten you before you got saved, the sinner you that was before you were saved was utterly taken away. It was killed. It died. And the fact that it's proven it died, you had a burial. You see, we don't bury people alive, do we? No, and God didn't allow Jesus to be buried alive. He was dead, and so were you. So we not we Jesus was not buried alive, and neither was you buried alive. This is evidence and proof that your sins was utterly taken away. It's evidence and proof that your sinfulness was taken away. It's evidence and proof that you was buried together. Notice these words, together with Christ. You were in him, you were also with him. Supernaturally by the Holy Spirit, you are now identified as a believer with his burial. Your old life is utterly, has been taken away. Now you might have memory. Of course, you might have emotions connected to those memories of your former life. And that's where we have to take these thoughts captive, not to ourselves, not to the preacher at the front, not to random verses of the Bible. We take them captive to Christ. We take them captive to the selfie, the new Holy Spirit selfie that we was with Christ in his burial. And when you get the revelation that you was with Christ in his crucifixion and his burial, you will understand what has truly happened to your former life. And therefore, when the devil comes and to accuse you or people or thoughts in your head, you can say, get ye behind me, for it is written, I was crucified and buried with Christ. My former self is now dead and buried. Hallelujah. And so we don't resurrect the former life. And that's another lesson in itself with resurrection with Christ. But you've already had this burial. So don't try and bury things. Don't try and crucify things. They are already dead. Just believe that they are dead and buried. Praise the Lord. So this association of baptism here. Now there's two types of baptism mentioned in the New Testament in regards to a believer. And I say that in regards to a believer. There is water baptism, of course, which is a symbolic act of what has already taken place spiritually. But it's what's also known as spirit baptism. What happened to you when you received Christ and was born again, in which the Holy Spirit came and indwelt the believer, you and me. And so this verse in Colossians 2.12 is referring to this, buried with him in baptism. Hallelujah. So this is not just water. Water represents that, but it's talking about something that has actually happened. Because as you look at this verse, it's in the is tense, which means past tense. It has already happened. And again, I encourage you to see that your baptism by the Spirit in Christ and with Christ into his death and burial... You've already in the past been buried with Christ. You came into the reality of that by the gift of by faith and grace. And so you received what had already actually happened at the burial of Christ. Hallelujah. Otherwise, he'd have to keep coming to do it, wouldn't he? And he doesn't. He did it once and for all. And so we can receive those benefits now because it's already been done, provided for supernaturally. And we've already, as a saved person, been accounted for in his finished work. Hallelujah. So spirit baptism means we are buried with Christ. Now, the with is also the word synchronization or in sync. And so, as I've said before, together with 
has a root meaning in the Greek, which is denotes union. It means together. It means association, companionship, process. So you've gone through the process of burial already. You've gone through that process of being buried with Christ already, died with Christ. You're going through that process. It's already been done. It's also a passive word, which means it was done to you. And that's where grace comes in. All this has been provided for you, done to you by God himself and by his grace. It's nothing that I earn. And that's why I encourage you not to try and die and, 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 and bury yourself. Just recognize it has already happened and it's true. Hallelujah. And so, uh, interestingly, it's what's also known as a reflective word, which means Paul the Apostle is reflecting back to what happened when Christ died and crucified and was buried. He's reflecting, and we all need to reflect on the right things. You know, he's reflecting on what Christ has done. He's reflecting the fact that he was in union. He was with Christ in his burial. He was in companionship with Christ in his burial. He was in the resemblance of Christ in that sense. He's going through that same process with Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, it's hard to get our head around it, of course, you know. But the, the reality is he's reflecting back. And so my challenge to you today is what do you reflect on? Are you reflecting on the past life that you had? Are you reflecting on your sins that have already been forgiven? Are you reflecting on what kind of person you was? Or are you going to now from this day reflect on the fact, like the Apostle Paul, that in the past you was buried with Christ already and that your former life is now gone. Praise the Lord. This is so key to Christian women. And so I really want to encourage you in that truth. It means also uh, possession. So you possess this reality. It means instrumentality. That means by the process of the fact that you are with Christ, burial of your old life has happened. Praise the Lord. Amen. And so this is also a word of complete. So this word as shows us that when we was buried in union with Christ, in his burial, the old life was completely gone in God's eyes and should be in yours. It's been taken from you. You have memory, you have emotional attachment, but the reality is now we can reflect correctly on the fact it's been buried with Christ. Amen. And so that's so important. Romans 6 verse 3 says this, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptised into Jesus Christ were baptised into his death. And so again, this is a spiritual reality that walk to baptism has. Again, the spirit baptism is brought this into your spirit. Walk to baptism is the outward uh, picture, as it were, of the true fact. And so know ye not. So again, the Apostle Paul is really trying to bring to their understanding, as I'm trying to bring to your understanding today, that you have been buried with him. That's Jesus. By baptism into his death, the Holy Spirit has put you into union with Christ in that process of being buried with Christ already. And so that's a reality of not trying to get it. That's a reality that you've already received it. Praise the Lord. And it says this, we've been baptised into with him into death. So you actually already died. I'm going to say that again. You've already died. You've died to self. You've died to sin. You have already died and been buried. So you don't have to prove to God. Now listen to me carefully. 
It's so important. We don't have to prove to God and you don't have to prove to God how dead you are. You know, when I became a Christian, you know, you go through certain phases when you're a baby in Christ and you try and prove to God how self-sacrificing you are. You give up certain things. You try to prove to God how dead you are and how crucified you are. You try and prove it in your own ways and what you think is a good thing to do in order to prove yourself dead. We don't prove ourselves dead. We don't prove ourselves crucified. We don't prove ourselves buried. Christ proved it to us in the fact that he was buried and we was buried with him. We are actually not baptised into, and when I'm saying baptised here, I'm on about what the Holy Spirit has brought us into, into Christ's death. That happened 2,000 years ago, by the way. We are baptised into his death. This isn't about our death. This isn't about our effort. This isn't about what we're trying to do. This is about what Christ has done and the fact we was buried into his death, not ours. Now, the alarm bells goes off with some and say, well, what about sinful issues? Shouldn't we you know, crucify the flesh? No, what we do is we don't yield our members, Romans chapter 6, to the works of the flesh because we've already died, we've already been crucified, we've already been buried with Christ and now we are empowered by the Spirit to live correctly and so we make a choice not to yield our members to the flesh anymore. Is that a little bit of self-denial? Absolutely, but it's not denying yourself as, as believers tend to go off for all kinds of tangents. We, we believe the fact that Christ has done it in us, with us, through us and around us if you was. This is the power of God, not the power of our own flesh. Hallelujah. Romans 6 verse 4 says this, Therefore we are buried with him, notice this term again, buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in the newness of life. So we are buried, our sinful life, our old sinful life, is dead and utterly taken away. So the sinful nature, the sinful power, has no authority over the believer anymore. And that's why if we are to commit sins, we have to yield ourselves to it. And you have stronger Christians, you have weaker Christians, you have mature Christians, you have carnal Christians in that sense. You know, we have struggling Christians. And look, when you get one big family, you get all kinds of situations and temptations, of course, absolutely. But to understand how to approach these issues, we have to approach them through the crucified Lord, through the fact that we are crucified with him. So we have died and we are also proven to be dead by burial. Hallelujah. We don't get buried alive. Amen. So that means to, in order to find your former life, you would have to find the tomb of Jesus. You would have to find the body of Jesus. Now, let me say this again. It's so important. If it is true that you was crucified with Christ and buried with Christ and your old life was buried with Christ, In order to find your old sins, in order to find your old nature, in order to find your old former life that sometimes can trouble you so much, you would have to find the tomb of Jesus with the body of Jesus still in it. That's why the Apostle Paul says that if Jesus didn't raise from the dead, you see, our sins ain't forgiven. And we are men most miserable without any hope whatsoever if Jesus didn't raise from the dead. Because it would be proven that we can find his body, we can find his tomb, and therefore we are still in our sins. But the opposite is actually true, isn't it? We can never find the body of Jesus 
because we were crucified with him and buried with him. But the good news is he raised from the dead. That means you cannot find your former life. Simple fact done. Amen. So we were buried with him. And when I say again with him, we were buried together with him in sync, in synchronization supernaturally with Christ, which was actually brought about into our being when we became a believer. And so we show our unity with Christ supernaturally. Amen. Let's turn to the explanation part of the notes. This burial is a passive past event. You can't do anything that you have come into when you were born again, which is our spirit baptism. Our burial with Christ is important to see because it shows that our Adamic life is dead. We are truly dead to sin. Burial is the proof of death. Christ and ourselves were not buried alive. This burial with Christ is important because it shows that we are now dead to sin, dead to the law, because the demand of the law was fulfilled with death. Hallelujah. Dead to the rudiments of the world, Colossians 2 verse 20. We are dead to the commandments of men, because our life is hid in God. Colossians 2 verse 3. Our burial is a baptism into his death. And remember, it's not our death. In this verse, our burial is likened to being planted. That word planted into his death. To be planted is a word that means united with, born together with, joint origin, implanted by birth and kindred. So we've been planted into his death, folks. Can you imagine that? So to be planted, we was taken and planted supernaturally by the Holy Spirit's work into his death. Praise the Lord. And we've come into that reality. Now we're born again. Hallelujah. To be baptised into Jesus is a passive word, meaning it's been done to you and for you. So remember, we're not trying to die ourselves. It's been done for us, to us, in the fact that we was united and identified with his burial. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You was not even born physically at that time. It happened, but by the God's grace, you was unified with Christ in his burial and death. So you can reap the benefits. Isn't that marvellous? Isn't that the wonderful grace of God? Isn't that the wonderful grace of God? And when we believed on Jesus, this reality entered into us by the Holy Spirit. And so my former life is dead and buried. Praise the Lord. I can't find it. Try and find it, folks. And as I've already said, you would have to find the body of Jesus. You know, I preached a message once where, titled, where, Where's the Body? You know, and to find that old life, you would have to find the body. You can't find the body, so I can't find my former sins. I can't find my former life. And that's the mentality now. That's the change of mind that this truth should have. Because I am buried with Christ, dead and buried, it means he is no more remembers my sins. It means, hallelujah, I'm justified and reconciled and forgiven. It proves it. Hallelujah. Amen. So now let's just turn to the other scriptures section. And we're going to look first at 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 4. Let's read this together. And it says this, 
and that he was buried, talking about Jesus, of course, and we remember we was with him in his burial, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. So Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection that you were unified with by the Holy Ghost in union with, hallelujah, in resemblance with. So Christ died, you resemble that, he, you died. Christ was buried, you resemble that, you were buried. You was united with that. Christ was raised, so was you. You resemble that, you're risen. Amen. And so it will go on. This is the new Holy Spirit identity. This is the Holy Spirit selfie I've been talking about. And because of that, all the benefits have come of the cross and resurrection into your life. Now it says this, he rose on the third day. He was buried according to the scriptures. He died, buried and raised according to the scriptures. Jesus never did anything in his life outside of the scriptures, folks. It was already prophesied concerning him. And I really want to bring this out in this lesson. It is so important when you look at how your Christian life functions and how it should now walk. It says this in John 5 verse 39. Jesus said this himself concerning the scriptures. Search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. They are they which testify of me or speak of me. The scriptures there is in reference to the Old Testament. The Old Testament spoke of Jesus' coming. It spoke of Jesus' death. It spoke of Jesus' life. It spoke of Jesus' death, burial and resurrection and his coming again. It spoke of all these things. And so Jesus here is saying, look, because I'm going to die, buried and be raised, etc. According to the scriptures, the Old Testament scriptures reveal this. He says, search the scriptures. You think because you just read them, because you just search them, because you have knowledge of the Old Testament scriptures that you have eternal life. No, you have eternal life because the scriptures speak of me. So believe on me because I have now arrived. And that's the key thing. That's the difference between ordinary Bible study and Bible devotional reading and understanding who Jesus is in his death burial and resurrection as a christian now we are to see ourselves dead with christ and buried with christ and raised with christ according to the scriptures praise the lord it says in luke 24 27 and beginning at moses and all the prophets he expounded that's jesus he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the old testament scriptures the things concerning himself. Now, I love this verse of scripture because Jesus had rose from the dead and he started to appear to his disciples. And he, I think it was at least two occasions, if not more, but two occasions to his disciples, he expounded the Old Testament scriptures and revealed to them why he had to die and why he had to raise from the dead. He began to show them the scriptures, all that was concerning himself. This was the greatest Bible study ever known. This is why the preacher, the, the apostles writ and preached the way they preached and the way they writ the epistles, all concerning Jesus' death, burial and resurrection. They, Because they was revealing what they'd been taught by the resurrected Jesus himself about his death, and burial and resurrection and they writ that in the epistles and preached it all the way through and so it's so important that we too study the scriptures in the same way we do everything in light of and when we're studying the verses of the bible we do everything in light of christ in the scriptures in his death burial and resurrection that concerns us and so that's the greatest Bible study to do. And that's what we're learning as we do in just Jesus. And especially that we are buried with Christ according to the scriptures. Now, the scriptures say, and where does it prophesy 
Well, well, as many places it prophesies Jesus' death, bro, I'll just bring one out to you according to the scriptures. Isaiah 53, verse 9, it says this, And he, that's the Messiah who would come, uh, made his grave with the wicked, with the rich man, and with the rich man in his death, because he had done no violence neither was there any deceit in his mouth now we know know that he died between two thieves on the cross and then he was placed into the rich man's tomb joseph of arimathea and we know he was placed into that tomb he was in the grave he was buried in the tomb of the rich and so that's the fulfillment of the prophecy of jesus amen who did and was buried but we was also placed with christ in his death and burial praise the lord jesus and, I, and i've always seen this as a great revelation folks amen if christ died and was buried according to the scriptures now listen to me carefully if christ died and was buried according to the scriptures so have you with christ and have received the benefits of that death and burial, have resembled and have union with his burial, according to the scriptures. In other words, everything the death of Christ, everything the burial of Christ means, as I said, your old life is gone, your sins are gone, your former life is gone. Everything that that means, according to the scriptures, for Jesus, it means the reality for you as well. If it means that for Jesus, if it means he took away your sin, if it means, hallelujah, that he became sin on the cross and he, he died and then was buried, if it means his blood was shed on that cross and you was unified with him by the Holy Spirit, if it means that, Hallelujah. It's true of you. You have received what Christ has done for you because supernaturally you was unified with him. Hallelujah. According to the scriptures. Not according to you. Not according to me. Not according to our emotions. Not according to our feelings. Not according to our doubts. This is fact because Jesus died and was buried according to the scriptures. So according to the scriptures, I have received the benefits of these things. Done, fact, received them. Amen. Hallelujah. Christ's burial was proves he died and also proves you died once and for all. Your old life died once and for all. You've just got to believe that now. Just got to walk in that truth now. Hallelujah. And that's why the scriptures encourage us that because we died and was raised with Christ, we should now walk in the newness of the life. Not the, look, we're not to walk in death. We're not to try and keep reminding ourselves of our past life and our death. We're not trying to remind ourselves of sins as though they've never been taken away. We are to walk in the newness of life now. That's our new selfie. That's who we really are now. And that gives us power to say no, power not to yield to the power of sin in this world. That's the reality, folks. Amen. Ephesians 4 verse 5 says, One Lord, one faith, one baptism. And again, I'm saying this because baptism represents a burial. Hallelujah. One baptism is referencing to the fact by faith, we are buried with Christ once and for all. What do I mean by this? If what water baptism is once and for all, isn't it? When a Christian water baptism, you die with Christ and rise with Christ symbolically. Once you're saved, you get baptized once. Because it represents the fact that you was once and for all dead, buried and raised with Christ once and for all. So why do Christians, why do we sometimes, why did you sometimes keep going over the fact that I've got to try and keep getting a read of my past life? When you meet ministry that keeps bringing up the past 
it's a, a continual baptism and resurrection. In reality, it's a continual baptism and resurrection that's being implied. This is wrong because you, even water baptism itself proves that it was once and for all because you get baptised once you get saved, once, proving that salvation, at salvation you were buried with Christ once. And your old life was dealt with once. Your sins was taken away once and for all. Praise the Lord. I hope you're getting this revelation into your hearts as you're listening to this teaching today. Amen. So it's one Lord, one faith and one baptism. By the Spirit, we have been buried, baptised into the body of Christ. Hallelujah. So this also represents the fact that when the Holy Spirit indwelt us, when he unified us with Christ's death and burial, we were also implanted into his body. We are members of his body. That's also the church, folks. That's why when you become a Christian and you're indwelt by the Spirit, hallelujah, and you're unified with what Christ has done, the reality is you're also members of the body of Christ, the church, the true church. You're members. You might have never attended church yet, but you're already unified with the church because you are unified with Christ already. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. 1 Peter 3 verse 21 says this, that like figure whereunto baptism does also now save us, not to the putting away of the flesh, but the answer of a good conscience towards God by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now these Christians that Peter was writing to were Hebrew Christians. They were frightened to publicly get baptised because of the persecution going around and their conscience was in a difficulty of whether they should publicly go public with their salvation and so Peter here is saying look the like figure that he's talking about if you look at the previous verse which is verse 20 is Noah. Noah went in the ark and the waters the judgment came down and he went through the waters, which represented baptism, which represents burial with Christ. And that's why water baptism can't take away, as Peter says, the filth of the flesh. It can't deal with the flesh. It's that spirit baptism that does that. When you're born again, you're in the ark. Now, who is the ark? It's Jesus by grace. Now, Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. It also says in Hebrews that Noah believed and built the ark by faith. So you see grace and faith together saved Noah and his family when he went into the ark. The ark represents Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And so when we are unified with Jesus Christ in his death and burial and resurrection, hallelujah, then we escape the judgment to come like Noah escaped and wasn't affected by the judgment of God. So the fact that you are buried with Christ means that you will not undergo judgment. Dead people don't receive judgment. Hallelujah. That's fact, folks. They don't receive, you don't see the effects of judgment when you're dead. You don't feel it. Somebody could punch you. They could kick you. You don't feel it. In the same way, in Christ and with Christ, that baptism into his death means that we don't receive the judgment. We don't fear the judgment to come. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We're obviously, we'll talk about the resurrection in one of the next lessons. Praise the Lord. Amen. So baptism in itself does not save the water baptism that is, but spirit baptism is the supernatural aspect. Hallelujah. So then let's just go to the apply section on your notes. And it's a very simple one, this. Very simple. Read it with me. Begin to recognise that your old self no longer exists. I'll say that again. 
begin to recognize that your old self no longer exists. It's been buried with Christ. If you're going to try and find your old life, you would have to find the body of Jesus, which means he wouldn't be raised from the dead and we would be most miserable people. Question. Three questions. Our sins have been buried away. So in what ways can we be reminded of sin? I'll say that again. Our sins have been buried away. So in what ways can we be reminded of sin, especially our past life? How, question two, how can we deal with the memory of sins that have already been buried with Christ? And question three, what does it mean to reckon then ourselves dead to sin? So if burial has already took place, death has already took place, what does it mean then to reckon ourselves dead to sin? And you'll find that in Romans chapter 6. Praise the Lord. I hope you've enjoyed this lesson. And I'm trying to build up now that Holy Spirit overall selfie for you. You have been crucified with Christ. Now you've been buried with Christ. And we'll see what the next lessons bring on just Jesus. So until next time, God bless.